Hey guys, it's eight number two. Um, we're gonna go to chapter two for this one of Ruth. Um, oh, this is kind of really cool because like they arrived there. Um, you can read in there that in the end of chapter one how Naomi's like, I'm sorrowful, but they welcome her home. Her little community welcomes her home. But in chapter two, Ruth goes out looking for food and she does what they call gleaning. Now gleaning is where once the fields have been picked pretty much by the farmers, they let the poor people or the people without the widows and the orphans come in and pick what's left. So it'll be like the little bits that they missed or they purposefully, those are the nice people that they were, purposefully only did circular crops in the square field. So the corners, um, all the corners, you could go and pick from that. Um, and not pay for it. So basically help clip the farmer clean up the field, but also you got the food that you needed. So Ruth goes out to glean fields. Now she happens to just be led to this field of a man called Boaz. And Boaz, really decent dude, um, sees her out there and goes, huh, who's that? Because usually it's widows, orphans, and scraggly looking people. And you can tell just by Ruth's character that she would have, you know, done her hair properly, put it, you know, just the way she was, right? She would have made her best appearance because that's who she was, that's her character. So she's going to get noticed, especially being a Moabite in the midst of a Jewish settlement. Um, so Boaz says in verse 5, who is it? You know, who does she belong to? And they say, oh, this is the Moabitish woman that came back with Naomi. And he's like, oh, okay, so let her, let her do that, but invite her in for lunch and, and bring her in and make sure that she's taken care of. So in verses 10 to 12, we're going to read that, um, but you really want to read sort of 8 through 16 as the whole happening, but we're just going to look at 10 and 12. Um, so basically he says, come in, who are you? Um, and... You know, you, you come and you glean any time you want, and the young men that are out there, you ask them for water any time you want, and if any one of them messes with you, they're answering to me, mate. So you're good. Um, so she really does like that. He's protecting her already, even before he, he really knows her, um, just because of the way she is acting. Now, don't we do that with other people? Like, you can just tell with some people that they're good people. You trust them, you're kind to them, there's nothing dodgy about them. So you feel that you can trust them. So this is what Boaz is doing here. He's feeling good about it. Um, plus he also knows that Naomi is kinsman. Um, meaning she's, she is related through marriage. Her husband that had passed away um, is some form of cousin to Boaz. Um, somehow it doesn't say, but yeah. So let's look at 10 and 12. Uh, 10 through 12. It says, um, this is after Boaz has said these nice things to her, him, she says, Then she fell on her face and bowed him sit herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes, that thou shouldst take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? Like, she knows that she's, like, going to be looked down on. And she's like, Why are you being so kind to me? Like, thank you, but why? Um, and Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been shewed unto me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity, as in the place she came from, um, and art come unto a people which thou knowest not heretofore. So you've come to a strange land, you've looked after your mother-in-law, and that you know tells me that you're of a good character. Um, he goes on to say in 12, the Lord recompense thy work and a full reward be given thee of the Lord of, of God of Israel under whose wings thou art come to trust. So under the protection of the Lord, she had come to trust others um, and be trusted, not by, other, not by the Lord and by others. So that's a really lovely way. So being that no matter what's going on, the question I came up with here to ask you guys is how have you come to trust in the Lord in difficult times? What about how have you come to trust in the Lord in all times? Good times, bad times, difficult times, boring times, sleepy times, happy times. How have you come to trust in the Lord? Because it's not just when we're suffering. It can happen all the time, right? There's all sorts of different situations we come in. And how can we trust in the Lord in all those times? So the Lord guided Ruth to the field. She didn't know which field she was going to. He guided her to Boaz's field, knowing that Boaz would be kind to her. 
um, and Boaz was guided to see Ruth during the gleaning. He might not have come out that day. He might not have seen her. She might have gone already. This is divine design. This is how it happens. Um, and in a time where Ruth and Naomi were simply trying to survive, the Lord enters and blesses their efforts because they trusted him. A story of kindness, redemption, and redemption, Boaz recognizes Ruth's faith and steadfastness, her character. Um, and in verse 12, reminds her of Christ's promise of a full reward for those who always trust the Lord. And so, have you come to trust the Lord in difficult times? Some of us have. But are you trusting the Lord at all times? All things. It's a hard one. And we're all working on it. So keep trying. Works out. Anyway, out of Bedna, he said, Strong faith in the Saviour is submissively accepting of his will and timing in our lives, even if the outcome is not what we hoped or what we wanted. Yeah, so strong faith in the Saviour is submissively accepting of his will and timing in our lives, even if the outcome is not what we hoped for or wanted. Because often that is the case. We have an idea of what we're wanting, and it doesn't happen. And then we think, well, we trusted in the Lord and we didn't get what we wanted. It's like, well, yes, but you got something that was better for you. You just don't see it yet. Um, which is kind of hard. It's a harsh lesson to take, right? But it is what it is. It's truth. So there you go. Um, I just love that about that whole story of Ruth and Boaz. So go read this one. It's really not a hard read. There's short chapters. Um, really, really good. Remember, you can read it in the book form. You can read it online. You could, there's, there's lots of different Bible apps you can have. Our Gospel Library app is amazing, um, but most of you have Bibles at home. But just, it's three chapters, and it's really good. So we've got one more on Ruth. We're going to go and look over at what happens to her in chapter three. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll discuss what happens, and they get married. It's so cool. Okay, I'll see you there.